Glory to God, family and friends. I greet you in the peace and in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose name is the only name that matters. Hallelujah. It is definitely a process to go from the pit to the palace, requiring God's favor. I think a lot of things in the word have been dumbed down to this day, including what it means to carry our cross, including the cost of salvation, counting the cost of salvation, and including God's favor, which sometimes we, we think that means like everything's just going smooth and there's no hiccups and, you know, we're just being greatly blessed going about our business, but that therein lie the problem. We see all throughout scripture that God's favor is always always linked to his purpose. The word tells us in Proverbs that many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord which prevails. So as you who are called and chosen for this time, go about your purpose. You're going to need God's favor and his favor will be with you. It's all throughout scripture, OT to NT. And we're going to just go through some examples. You know, first and foremost, we see in Isaiah 61, the year of the Lord's favor, which is actually a word uh, that I put out several months ago that I'm going to link. Even at that time, I didn't even really have such an understanding of what the favor of the Lord was. But when you look in the, in the scriptures, the favor of the Lord, it's a necessary it's not just to give you a good day. It's not just to, you know, to get you that job or to give you some money. His favor is about going forth in order to multiply for many. So he favors you as you're on the mission. Because when God's word goes forth, which he has purposed you for, given you promises and callings and all sorts of amazing things that he anointed you for. And listen, not pulling nobody's leg. There's a reason you're here born in this time, okay? Don't you Moses out on me, okay? There's a reason that you're here. You don't have to be here. A lot of people didn't make it this far, not even just saying that they passed, but a lot of people just fell off track, you know, even for those of you that are fighting the good fight, you're fighting the good fight, okay? Don't judge yourself, for the Lord qualifies us, not ourselves, thank goodness. So the greatest example of this is in Isaiah 61, the year of the Lord's favor, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness, for the prisoners. So we see here uh, a whole bunch of people in bad situations and suddenly someone's here, the new thing. And this is of course about our, our awesome Lord Jesus Christ who is here to do these things. And of course his spirit through you continues to do these things. Okay. The next verse, uh, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance from our God. You know what? As I'm speaking, I'm reminded of something. Hold on. So here in Isaiah, we see um, to proclaim the year. This Remember, this is the scripture that Jesus would speak in near the beginning of his ministry. Once he left the wilderness and he goes back to Galilee in the, in the power of the Lord, having overcome the temptations of Satan. Hallelujah, our perfect Lord Jesus. And he goes to Nazareth right before they try to kill him. And he searches through the scriptures and boom, this is what I'm reading. And he's proclaiming the, the scripture that was written about him. This is written about him, okay? And of course, everyone freaks out. How dare you say that this is about you? How dare you be our perfect Messiah? Yada, yada, yada. Don't get me started. So here he says, sorry, I missed my scripture. So here he says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. So he's talking about how he's come to proclaim freedom to the captives, to release from darkness the prisoners. Uh, this shows that many people are in bondage who he is now here to set free. That is the Lord's favor. It is being in a tough situation. I was going to put it in layman's terms, being in a tough situation. And the Lord uses people or by his hand, however he wants to deliver you from that bondage. And it's all about the favor. It's not arbitrary. Okay. But you're always going to see some kind of pit before the palace inextricably linked. 
And what I, I th what this reminded me of was what we had the other day, which was uh, our, our other word. Hold on, I'm going to make a note to link these words. Hold on. I've never linked words below before, but the past couple of weeks, like so much is connecting. And I, I make the video and I totally forget. Okay, so this reminded me of our word from the other day about Psalm 24. And it's the same thing we see here. He says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. They will receive a blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. So we see again here, favor and vindication. Just like in Isaiah here, we see the Lord's favor or blessing, you know, favor and vengeance or vindication. A similar link here. I want to link one more word. It's going to be, oh my mind, help me Lord, help me Lord. I forgot the word, but I'll remember it. It's the third word that I want to link. Uh, they're all just popping into my mind. So let's get into some of these examples about the journey from the pit to the palace, which always requires the favor of the Lord. And of course, means that you're in the pit. You know, if a lot of you knew exactly what your walk was going to entail, you may not have signed up for it, okay? Do you remember field day when we were young? Or is that, I don't know, but, you know, we would have, like, at the end of the school year, there'd be all these, like, physical, um, like, gym activities. And it was called field day, and you had to sign up for what you wanted to do, right? And, um, you know, I, I never signed up for... for um, for climbing the rope. I, I had and still have not awesome upper arm strength. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have signed up for, you know, you no one would sign up for the worst thing if they knew nobody wants to go to the pit. You know what I mean? And anyone who's been through the pit, however, is fit for the palace, has made it there by the grace of God, by his favor. So let's get into it. I, I made a whole bunch of notes for us. All right, let's see. And I'm just going to, I'm going to just blow right through. I, I did want to say this one note also. This came on my heart as I started making these notes. When you're on the right path, scripture will come to pass in your life. And to me, that's so beautiful. Holy Spirit, put that in my heart. Because sometimes we're looking for evidences. We want to know that we're on the right path, right? When you're on the right path, Scripture will come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Genesis 6, 8, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God favored Noah so that he didn't tell anyone else what was coming. He didn't tell anyone else to build an ark. He didn't tell anyone else, nor did he tell Noah to tell anyone else what was going on. He found favor with the Lord. There was a great flood coming. And, and yeah, he had to, you know, uh, perhaps you could say that the days of Noah itself were the pit and the Lord was delivering him from them. You know, of course, Noah would be, would be used greatly, right, to repopulate the earth, hallelujah, and his family. But Noah had to build that ark. <laughs> like, I can't even imagine, you know, from cubit to cubit, had to build that ark for as long as it took. And this was because he had favor from the Lord. It, it wasn't, it's not, like I said, you look at it sometimes like, it's just the Lord handing me something I want. He's just giving me something I want. And that's, it's not the case biblically. It's always about the mission. Wasn't Noah greatly needed his mission? It's favor of the Lord is always about the mission. And that's, you know, the specific scripture. Uh, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. In Exodus 33, 12 uh, Moses found favor. Now we know exactly that Moses should have died. You know what I mean? No, Moses should have died with all the other babies in, in the land. But instead, well, we all know the story of Moses. And did Moses have a great purpose? Yes. And he needed the favor of the Lord. And it wasn't an easy journey for Moses, you know, if by, by any means. I'm not going to get into every single story because I have a lot of examples because it's all throughout scripture. But Moses found favor before the Lord. Well, let me read you the exact Exodus 33 and 12 says. It's actually Moses going back and forth with the Lord. 
Moses said to the Lord, you've been telling me, lead these people. I love Moses. You've been telling me, lead these people. This is how I hear him saying it. You've been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You've said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. <laughs> He's just like, um, he's just going in with the Lord. The Lord replies, I just love this whole account. The Lord replies, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Like, relax, Moses. <laughs> I just, I love it. But here, you know, he's, he's like saying, Lord, you have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. Of course, it's just Moses tripping. But he, Mo, the Lord says to Moses, you, I have found favor with you. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at um, Joseph. Joseph, as we know, um, was, you know, favored by his own father. He was gifted. He was sold into slavery, betrayed, imprisoned. But God's favor was always with him. Now, we don't look at it like that, but we need to. Because, again, so often, especially, listen, especially on this walk in these times, we talk a lot about persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Doesn't this verse keep coming up lately? And it's because he wants you to be aware that this journey is not afflictionless. Don't listen to the false peace of people that are walking a worldly Christianity and being blessed by the spirit of the world. Listen, there's a great difference of walking this walk in purpose or not. And it's very obvious, okay? For Joseph, God's favor was always with him, but he was betrayed. He was imprisoned. He, can we even imagine how he felt? I mean, many of you have been betrayed by family members, have been left for dead, have been treated like you're nothing, will never be nothing, will never go nowhere, never do nothing, okay? The favor of the Lord was with him until he became second in command to Pharaoh. That was the Lord's purpose prevailing. The Lord favored Joseph because he needed to get his people in them high places, right? We've been talking about Mike Johnson. We've been talking about how God is bringing his people, even still, even today, of course, into these high places, even politically, all around the world, wherever he wants. Genesis 39, 21, the Lord was with Joseph and he extended kindness to him. He found and he he gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer, scripture tells us. You know, again, worldly Christianity doesn't really want to hear that. Worldly Christianity is like, he gave him favor, yeah. In the sight of the chief jailer, he was jailed. He was jailed. Because today we think, well, if God loves me, he wouldn't jail me. If God loves me, he wouldn't let me go to the pit. That's That's not true. Many are the plans of a man's heart to have perfect peace, to have a perfect, easy life, right? Da, 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 da. But it's the purpose of the Lord that prevails if you let it. Or you can, you know, chase the world and these things. But if you go along the purpose of the Lord, yeah, you're going to experience a pit at some point, but the Lord's favor will be upon you and you will be delivered from these afflictions. Esther, Esther was an orphan whose parents died um, she had an uncle Mordecai. I know people say cousin, but apparently, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. But apparently in the earliest translations, the word uncle and cousin can be linked. And people have done research and found out it's actually her uncle. I say uncle, some say cousin, doesn't really matter. Um, either way, you know, back in these small communities, you know, I mean, that's hard. You know what I mean? Being a young woman, being raised by a man, he's not even really your father. I'm sure he loved her, but that's hard for any young woman. Okay. Her name was Hadassah, but her Persian name was Esther, which means something hidden. Hallelujah. And, you know, when the king sends an order for all females to be sent to the kingdom, right, because actually just a little insight, what happened is the king, uh, when Vashti was still enthroned, the king was actually having that party because he was trying to gain support to go for like a war to go against the Greeks. And all of his advisors, you know, it was actually kind of like um, probably not the wisest move of the king and his advisors. So, of course, he calls Vashti out. He's trying to gain support. They're all drunk and lit up. And he's like, you know, maybe trying to get their money or, or get their, their support, you know, to go, to go to war against the Greeks. Eventually, okay, Vashti, yeah, yeah, but eventually they would go to war and actually the Greeks would whoop their butt. The king would return back now, having kicked Vashti out. He has no wife. Um, the, the Persian Empire is like about to end. 
Um, he just lost a huge war. And so then we see his advisor saying, you know what, let's gather up all the women. So this was a decree, you know, Esther didn't go on her own. Esther had to go. She was collected up and had to go to the palace. And here in Esther 2.9, she was favored. Why was she favored by the Lord? Just for Esther so she could be queen? No, because the Lord's purpose prevailed here. She was going to deliver those people. And you see Esther even having a hard time, even in the palace at one point, she's like, you know, the king hasn't called me in 30 days. I don't know what to do. And we see kind of her abandonment issues here. I mean, she lost her parents. You know, we kind of see her, her abandonment issues. You know, the king is now her husband, but he hasn't called her in 30 days, probably because he's, you know, he's just lost a war. His, his whole kingdom's fallen to, to uh, you know, they're the Persian empires like coming to an end. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. You know what I mean? So he hasn't called her in 30 days and she's like kind of saying that back to, um, to her uncle. Just, um, yeah, you know, he hasn't called me. I don't know what we're going to do about this plan. I don't know. She's kind of languishing. Uh, and then she has to kind of snap out of it. And then she does, of course, hallelujah. And she calls all the people, you know, you fast, I fast. If I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. It's, it was always about the purpose of the Lord that she should be a deliverer for her people. This is why she was favored. Favor is not arbitrary. It's not to give you a good day. It's not to make you the best out there. It is to be used greatly by the Lord always. Okay. First Samuel 2.26. Samuel found favor with the Lord and with men. Samuel would be used greatly, greatly, um, especially as a prophet, you know, to prophesy to the people, to, to bring them back from their iniquity. Okay, Proverbs 21 and 1, excuse me, back to Esther, Proverbs 21 and 1. I wanted to share that, that verse, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He turns it where he wishes, you know, because who's to say that Esther was truly, I mean, they, they brought like over 300 beautiful women to the king's palace, you know what I mean? But it was the favor of the Lord. It was the Lord through Esther. It was the hand of God upon Esther that made her the most beautiful in the kingdom. Ladies, never disqualify yourself, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you are not qualified, but who you think you are, what you've done, what you look like, anything you can do, you are qualified by the favor of God. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called in many ways, okay? We see Elisha in the OT uh, surrounded by the enemies with his, his servant, his friend there, and they're surrounded by the enemy ar army and the Lord gives them favor. Elisha actually is it's able to pray to the Lord and, and ask that his servant's eyes be opened and suddenly he and the servant are seeing that around the enemy army is an even larger army of enemy, of uh, army of uh, God's angels, excuse me. You know, this huge angel army, hallelujah. God gives Elisha favor to blind the enemy army and so he can mislead them because the, the purpose of the Lord would prevail here. Joshua at war, he's able to stop the sun why? Because the purpose of the Lord would, was that Joshua and the people would overcome their enemies. And now stopping the sun, they had more time to do that. That's the favor of the Lord. David was a shepherd. Um, and in, actually, you know, a shepherd back in the day was like the worst job. You know, they probably reeked out with the sheep all the time. It was like the lowliest of jobs. Uh, Psalms 51 and 5 actually says, uh, David says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So he's probably an illegitimate child. Uh, he was the youngest son, probably an accident of some sort, weren't a lot of us. And, um, you know, he was anointed as a child, but then it would take like decades before he would become king, right? And in that time, the favor of the Lord allowed him to, sl uh, to slay Goliath, right? That the favor of the Lord. And, and the coolest thing I always think about this is that, you know, we don't see in scripture where God's like, go slay Goliath. All it took was David continuing to hear Goliath just in town, tormenting all the people and to say, who is this? Is anyone going to do anything about this? David did. Have you ever, you know, for those of you, for those of you, I want you to know that your suffering has been is specific to your calling. Okay. See, I want you to actually consider that it's specific to your calling. Also that in your life, the ways that you have 
been really compelled to speak the truth, been really compelled to stand up for the underdog, been really compelled to come against wickedness. Whew, that's all about purpose. That speaks to your bigger purpose picture, man. Because here, nobody had to tell David to do what was right. Nobody had to tell him, okay? But this is the man that would be king one day. And he didn't say it like, he didn't even think of it that way. He's not like, well, one day I'm going to be king. I better slow. No, he just did it because he was already a king. He was already a king, okay? In Acts 7, 46, we actually see in the New Testament, they're talking about David, says David found favor in the eyes of the Lord. We look at the New Testament, Paul and Silas, uh, when they were in the jail, we talk about this um, often, you know, they, they were in there. This is why it's so important not to consider your circumstances when it comes to, uh, you know, is the Lord pleased with me? And, and if you're about your own business, you're never going to be on the purpose of the Lord. You're not. Because you got to go to some really rough places. Sometimes you're going to have to have some really crappy feelings. Sometimes you're going to have to become again. Sometimes the weapons are going to have to form. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Those who are along the path of the Lord. Okay. No one is, is saved on this walk to go be about their own business. Not one. You are saved by faith. That then you receive the Holy Spirit by faith, okay? That's the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus do? He walked in purpose. What are you called to do? To walk in purpose. Hallelujah. So Paul and Silas, they're not in jail thinking, way to go, God. Thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? They start worshiping. A great earthquake happens. The doors open, right? And even then, they don't run out like, <laughs> you know, even then. It's always about the purpose of the Lord because then the jailer comes. And basically, the jailer would have been killed if he, if the prisoners got out and, you know, he would have been blamed for it. But long story short, Paul and Silas end up going uh, and saving the jailer and his whole family, preaching the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ to his whole family. Purpose, 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 okay? Favor is to keep going. You're anointed to endure, okay? Look at the woman with the issue of blood. Okay. Her name was actually Veronica. And when she just heard about the Lord, she knew that she could be killed because she was considered unclean because of her physical issue. She could be killed for going through all that public crowd, getting all close to the people and fighting to just to get to the hem of that garment. Right. But then the Lord heals her and Veronica goes to become an evangelist whose statue still stands. I'm not exactly sure where today. I have not done that research, but it was done uh, before. I actually learned this at, at church recently that her, somebody, you know, God bless God's people who really dig into some of these things, that her statue still stands in the world today as this great evangelist. The favor of the Lord healed her. And the favor of the Lord is always about the purpose of the Lord. Didn't die with her. She didn't get healed and say, okay, thanks. Back to my business. She went out and evangelized. She went out and was a world changer. Hallelujah. This is the favor of the Lord. Let's look at Mary. Jesus' mother. I mean, Luke 1.30, uh, the angel says to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And it was all about the purpose, right? Mary's husband's about to divorce her. She's suddenly pregnant. Ladies, can you put yourself in those shoes for a minute? What? You know what I mean? The whole town would have thought she was like a harlot. You know what I mean? And angels talking to me. Like there's just, I mean, that's, that's a, that's, that's insane. She had found favor of the Lord, favor of the Lord that would bring her to a manger to have a baby that she didn't even understand really how she had conceived. Talk about trusting in the Lord. Talk about the pit to the palace. And what would her palace be? Being the mother of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, her pit might have endured for so long. I mean, to watch your, your son be brutalized and crucified. But to see him resurrect. Hallelujah. Talk about the favor of the Lord. Always about enduring. Always about enduring. All who are chosen, those are the end of my examples, all who are chosen are going to experience the favor of the Lord because all who are chosen have great purpose in the Lord. You know, when I prophesied that this is the year of the favor of the Lord, and of course that was just me reiterating scriptural prophecy 
the prophecy of Isaiah, who would prophesy of the coming of the Lord. You know, this is all about God's people who are anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe many in this in this year, 5783, this former year, 2023, receive the Holy Spirit of the Lord. You know, I can testify to, to, to just witnessing. And in many videos, I would say I could just feel this crazy uprising of the body of Christ, like getting up off the ground. Hallelujah. That is the favor of the Lord. Why? Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, because the spirit of the sovereign Lord is within you, because the Lord has anointed you to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent you to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness. Wow, this is a word from the very beginning that I put out, the very beginning of, of this ministry here on YouTube. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. splendor. That's what you are. An oak of righteousness. A planting of the Lord so that his splendor could be displayed the glory of the Lord through you as you love the people in this way as you share the Word of God as you share even your testimony you teach what the Lord's taught you you go out and work in these gifts you just say Jesus to one person listen you are doing the good work of the Lord and his favor is upon you that's what the favor of the Lord is for let's not cheapen it to this worldly thing no no not the remnant not the remnant. We are here in purpose, on purpose, okay? Not by accident. Pray for assignments. Pray, Lord, use me. Lord, send me. Hallelujah.